Good day, learners. Um, welcome to Pedagogical Science Institute School Student Support Program. Um, this is still our Geography Online Classroom series. Um, this is specifically session number 10 of our climatology um, lessons. Um, we are going to be looking at the third and last lesson for tropical cyclones, which is an application session um, of the work we've done in the past two lessons on the topic tropical cyclones. Um, remember that um, this session is an application of all the topics we would have looked at. Um, so we we may be asked any of the content from the different fragments we've covered. Um, and I am going to be uh, covering some exam tips and skills that you can employ so that you master the topic for examination uh, purposes um, and, and for your test as well um, um, as, as, as the year progresses, uh, depending on when you watch this video. Um, so without wasting time, let's just get uh, straight to the questions. Um, the first question um, is a multiple choice question, really. Um, so this is a question um sourced from the department of education past papers of course now uh, you've been given figure 1.2 which is uh, on tropical cyclones um so we have a b um a b c so a b and c are showing us different diagrams of course now um, if you look at the different diagrams, they basically show us the different formation stage uh, or developmental stage of a tropical cyclone. So it means our questions have to be, uh, we have to answer questions on these different stages. So um, if you look at the inst instruction, you've been asked to refer to figure 1.2, which is showing the formation and characteristics um, of a tropical cyclone. So you match the description with the sketches A, B, and C, and you need to write only the letter A, B, or C next to the question number in the answer book. For example, 1.2.9 B. So remember, guys, to always follow the um, instruction uh, guidelines in answering your examination questions okay so let's let's just uh, not waste time let's go to the next question so it says 1.2.1 uh, cyrus and cumulus clouds produce light rainfall so from this we need to identify whether it's a b or c now the answer there is b um it is b so in b we have uh, our uh, cyrus and cumulus clouds being produced over there so it's the immature stage um, where the system starts strengthening right um, i hope we are fine with that so you have b um, and then the next one is the column of low pressure develops in the center the column of low pressure develops in the center it's still at b in the immature stage you have you start having the um, the development of the uh, low pressure um, at the center of the system. Okay, um, and again, next one, latent heat is released from cooling air. So that is at A. So remember when uh, in our formation stage, um, we have um, temperatures increasing to 26 um, and above or 26,5 or 27 degrees celsius um, and we have um, upper air convection uh, 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 and conversions happen happening um, as this air uh, rises over the ocean and latent heat is released as a result um, um, next one is 1.2.4 
towering cumulonimbus clouds are evident around the eye that is at sea so c is showing us the mature stage we know that around the eye wall we will have cumulonimbus clouds forming due to rapid uh, evaporation 1.2 point five tropical cyclone reaches up to 100 kilometers in diameter so that is at b um and uh, we know that at c in the mature stage it um, uh, extends to a greater uh, um, diameter um, ranging up to 300 and, and, and so um so that's that's that um and uh, 1.2.6 pressure in the i pray in the eye drop drops to below 1000 hectopascals so the pressure um at c drops to below 100 one, so 1000 hectopascals so remember at c that's the mature stage and for us to have that mature stage pressure must be uh, well below 1000 um, hectopascals uh, water evaporates from warm tropical oceans that is a um, so that's when the system forms and the diameter of the tropical cyclone extends up to 500 kilometers so remember i said in the mature stage uh, our diameter may extend up to 300 kilometers to 500 kilometers um, 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 and even more um, so that is c um, in the mature stage so it's a simple multiple choice question it wants you to know your different stages of formation and what happens in each of the stages and be able to label um, um, uh, the, 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 the statements with the relevant stage and you see that you need to also know um, how the different stages will look the diagrams representing the different stages will look because you won't be given the labels in the exam you have to provide for us those labels so please make sure you watch the video on um, stages of development in lesson one so that um, you master that section of work okay then let's look at a longer question um, hurricane delta um, so this is a a question that is an article uh, in it figure 1.3 you were asked we were asked to refer to figure 1.3 showing hurricane delta um, and let's just answer the first question how many hurricanes preceded or occurred before hurricane delta in 2020 it is three because remember d is letter number four so three hurricanes occurred before it so now let's look at the information over here now we have an arrow showing a it's just to study our diagram we have an arrow showing a and we know that um, it is showing towards the center of that system so it means a is what so a is basically the eye right so guys let's remember that a is the eye yes so a is the i so it's just labeled that okay and then uh, we have the pathway of delta and we see it's going to a um south westerly direction so so it's not a southwesterly it's a north westerly direction um so what is that telling us this is in the northern hemisphere so let's remember that it's in the northern hemisphere because remember we did the directional uh, movement or the pathway of the system right so i hope we are fine with that okay so let's read what they are saying about it and um, they're saying hurricane delta um, um nearing its secondary peak intensity east of texas on october 5 um it formed on october 5 2020 and it dissipated on the 12th of um, october um the highest winds were 230 kilometers per hour um the lowest pressure was 953 hectopascals uh, or millibar um uh, fatalities were six in total so six people they died um and the damage is worth uh, three um 300 billion um uh, in dollars so that's the 
damage. Okay, then what does the article say? Hurricane Delta was the record um, flying fourth named storm of 2020 to strike Louisiana. Now, Delta formed from a tropical wave. The next day, the system was sufficiently organized to be designed uh, or designated as a tropical depression. And soon after, tropical storm delta, extreme rapid intensification ensued throughout October 5 into October 6, with delta becoming a category four category four hurricane within 28 hours of maintaining tropical storm status. So the storm quickly weakened before making landform in uh, Puerto Morelos, Mexico, as a high-end category two hurricane with winds of 175 kilometers per hour. Um, states of emergency were declared in U.S. states of Louisiana. Remember, state of emergency means people were, were ordered by government to stay indoors. Um, so that happened in the state of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and several coastal uh, low-lying areas were ordered to evacuate. Okay, so um, in Mexico, trees and power lines were blown down, so this is the impact. So remember, guys, when you read um, your 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 articles highlight the main points uh, as you may already guess what they will ask you about the stuff now it says to continue louisiana and southeast texas were hit by an um a, by heavy rain high winds storm surge now delta then began to turn um more northeastwards into an area of cooler waters, higher wind shear and dry air, causing it to weaken back to a category two status. Um, so Delta then made landform at 11 UTC near um, Creole. Now Louisiana with winds uh, of 155 kilometers per hour and a pressure of 970 millibars. Now the storm began to weaken more rapidly after landform become a tropical low just to 22 hours later. Okay, okay, so we are fine with that. So that's the info we have. Um, remember, I highlighted the stuff, so you'll be expected to answer questions on that, of course. Okay, so let's look at the next question. Um, state two infrastructural damages caused by Hurricane Delta. So you were told in the article that Hurricane Delta um, destroyed what? It destroyed power lines and uh, destroyed people's rooms and homes and other buildings. Yeah, so power lines were, blow, were blown down, roofs were ripped off in other buildings. So those are the impacts. So it's a simple question. You should have um, went to the article and gotten the answers. Okay, 1.3.3, refer to the map and satellite image of Hurricane Delta. Name the area labeled A. We said lay area labeled A is the R. Okay. Um, B, in which direction is the converging air circulating around the center of a uh, hurricane? Uh, remember, it is the, the, the movement, when you track it, is, is, is towards the north um, westerly direction. So that means it is in the northern hemisphere. And low pressure system circulating in anti-clockwise direction or counter-clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere. Um, as per our golden rules. So let's remember that. Um, next question, such as a reason why the center of the hurricane is calm and cloud free. So remember the center of the system is an eye. 
Now at the eye, we have high pressure at, at the upper atmosphere, and this high pressure gives us cold air, and this cold air sinks into the center of the system, and as it sinks, it is warming up adiabatically, um, uh, which means there is an increase in temperature with a decrease in altitude. So now, the upward spiraling of wind movement of air creates an artificial wall around the center. And that's the wall we call the eye wall. Now this prevents, this eye wall will prevent surface air from rising and cooling at that particular region, which means no condensation will occur to produce clouds or rainfall as a result. Now, as air descends in the eye, it warms up adiabatically, and remember it has no moisture, so there will be no cloud formation as a result. Um, next question. Um, in a paragraph of approximately eight lines, um, um, explain why Hurricane Delta weakened from a category four to a two, category two status and was finally downgraded um, or became a tropical low, right? Okay, so for this question, we need to be more critical about it. The first thing is that at category four, the wind speed was 270 kilometers per hour, which means the system was very, 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 very destructive. Um, uh, uh, that's why it was deemed a site. Now, Delta began to turn more north eastward into an area of cooler water. So that explains why um, it went back to category two, because you increased uh, pressure a bit due to cold air, right? Now, again, higher winds shear and dry, causing it to weaken back to a category two status. Now, when it meant late form, it was cut off for, moist, for a moisture scent, a source, and it means it didn't have now access to, um, um, it doesn't have to direct access to uh, moisture from the ocean, now, as now it is exposed to um, the, the land, the land surface, of course. Um, so that's what you will have. So since there is less moisture, no moisture, the system will be degraded. Um, as a result, uh, again, we can think about a friction. So friction of air as it moves over the land decreases the wind speed of the system. And again, we, we say that the system slowed down and wind speed decrease to 155 kilometers per hour and finally it was classified as a tropical storm due to all of these changes and of course our pressure increased from the original pressure uh, to this one being 970 hectopascal. Now in essence, um, so let's just cover some tips for you to master this section. Um, you notice that the video was not as lengthy as the other ones. Um, remember, for more information, uh, more examination questions on this topic, please go to our YouTube page. Uh, I made a revision video on tropical cyclones last year. Um, 2021 for grade 12 uh, on the topic tropical cyclones. So please expose yourself to different sets of questions for that particular um, topic. Um, again, you need to do more practice questions. Remember, geography is a science. Uh, do more practice questions to test other variety of skills, such as uh, cross-section based questions, 
um, uh, diagram-based questions on different hemispheres, uh, more multiple choice questions and concept questions. So these are this is what you need to do to master this particular action. A section of work. Um, I hope we fully understand topical cyclones now um, and we are not going to struggle with this topic. It's one of the technical ones um, in your climatology curriculum, but if you master it, you are good to go. So please make sure um, you watch, rewatch the videos, take notes, uh, go back to the videos before you're test before your June exam if you have one in your school um, before your um, preliminary exam and before your final examinations um, so that you fully benefit from um, the content um, feel free feel free to subscribe and like uh, our page um, so that you are always uh, informed of our uh, uh, activities uh, you can hit on the bell icon so you are notified when we post the next session video now coming up in the next session is subtropical anticyclones um, lesson number one so we are going to be having that particular session which will be session number 11 of our climatology lessons um, thank you very much for tuning in to my online classroom. I look forward to meeting you guys, same time, same place in this particular platform. I am your instructor, Mr. P. Mbuyisa. I am happy to have you in my online classroom. I wish you all the best with the topic, Tropical Cyclones. Um, I shall see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Audio Jungle.